Hi everyone, my name is Kayla and welcome back to Kayas and Shelf where we talk about books. Today is something a little different and something I am very excited for. I'm putting together the book nook that I bought back in the fall or winter of last year. I had been waiting so long to find this particular one on sale, almost a year. I finally got it and then life got chaotic and I just could not find the time to put it together because I wanted to sit down and do it in one full sitting. And this from online it says takes about four to six hours to complete and that's a long time when you have a child it's very hard to find that length of free time to just simply focus on this task and not lose any pieces to tiny little hands so join me today as i build this book nook i am so excited i have the perfect spot that i've been saving for it on my bookshelf but i'm mostly kind of nervous if i'm honest I've never done a wooden puzzle because that's kind of what it seems like and I've never made a book nook before. All of the parts look quite delicate and I am worried I might break something in the process of trying to build this and maybe that's just what the experience is supposed to be like. But in the meantime, grab a drink, grab a snack, and join me as we build this cozy little garden shed together. My game plan here was to get everything organized and take a look at the instructions. Having never done this before, I wasn't quite sure what I was in for. I understood the concept of it being a puzzle and putting it together, but getting a visual of the pieces and everything involved was a huge help. Now I say that I was reading the instructions and really I was just glancing at the instructions to see what the layout was like. Sometimes you get puzzles or products that require a ton of reading before you even start, but this just throws you in so I decided to go with it. One major issue that I ran into, and I didn't really understand why I was running into this issue when I originally started, was the stairs. The stairs were just not lining up properly with the foundation that was set as you can see here. When I got the individual steps in place, they weren't staying, they were moving around, and they weren't sitting flush with the outside wall, and I really couldn't understand why. I figured I would just keep going and it would just work itself out, and at the end of the day, maybe I would just have a unique build, or if I was making a mistake, then it would become apparently Later on, but what I realized is actually the base had the holes to place that foundation in the wrong spot. So it looks like it might have been a manufacturing error, but like I said, I worked around it and it turned out okay in the end. It does have a gap between that sidewall and the stairs, but really I'm not going to be seeing that in the end product because there are a ton of other accessories and decorations that will be going in front. Something that was really surprising was the glue. I really didn't expect the glue to hold everything together as quickly and strongly as it does. The instructions just say it's regular glue, but I beg to differ because I have yet to see regular glue do that <laughs> so efficiently. This part was really fun. I love being able to put in all the different little plants. I love house plants. I actually took a horticulture course back in the day, if I were to say it that way, but it is something that I've loved and being able to build a garden house with all these little paper plants was just a delight. The scene into the back of this garden house is also beautiful. It just takes you further into what I assume would be an even bigger garden house and it just adds a bunch of atmosphere. And here we're just putting together all of the frames and decorations that will be the back wall of this garden house. With that back wall in place, you can kind of get an idea of how cozy this is going to be. Now, as I mentioned, putting in that side wall with the stairs was a little tricky because as you can see here, my foundation for the stairs is off. I really tried to make sure 
I was following the instructions, but like I said, I realized later on that it was a manufacturing error and there's nothing I really could have done about that. At the end of the day, it still looks pretty good, except if you were to shake this poor little book nook, those stairs would probably come flying right out. And because those stairs are loose and they're not tucked in the way they should be, you can see I've had to fix them a few times throughout this project. This is the one of the first times that I had to fix them. And the stair railing just did not sit in right as a result. Again, I'm not gonna be seeing that on the day to day, but just a good note, if you are going to make this kind of thing, if something isn't going quite the way you're expecting or by the instructions, it might not just be you. <laughs> there could be something else going on. Don't get frustrated, just work through the process. And that was my motto here. As I was working with these flimsy stairs and trying not to break it as I was putting in everything else was tricky, but just moving forward and working on every little step was a huge help keeping my focus away from those stairs and just being okay with the way they were. Now here I am building the desk or drawer system, which is, I imagine, hosting a plethora of different seeds. It's really cute when you get it in, you'll see in a moment here, but putting it together was tricky because while these pieces are made out of wood, they are not always going to work perfectly and you do need to be careful about the amount of pressure you're putting on them but if you don't put enough pressure you will not get the piece in and contrarily if you push too hard you will break them this was a good example of it one of the pegs ended up snapping as i was trying to get the door on and i ended up just gluing that drawer on completely instead of using the peg because there was no spare that i could find For me, one of the things that makes this so cozy is all of the small details. Yes, there are a ton of tiny pieces, but the little additions of the flowers, the plants, all in around the space on dressers, on drawers, on, on carts, all of that makes a huge difference in atmosphere for me and just adds that cozy lived in feeling, which is why I loved this garden nook when I found it online. The other bonus is being able to put together tiny, tiny little books. And that's what you're seeing here. I am trying to put together little tiny books to go on a trellis or a small little shelf that will end up going in this garden house as well. As you can see, we're getting a little box and books and even plants up on these shelves ready to build the bookshelf or trellis, depending on which use you're using it for. But it is a lovely standout orange with some doors on the bottom. And this part was a little tricky and I was a bit nervous as this is the wiring with the lights. So here I am making the lamp and I've never done anything with wiring. So while I was trusting the process and I was going to go full in and do everything I could to make those lights work, I was still nervous I would mess it up somehow. Luckily, I ended up managing it well enough, but there were a lot of small pieces here to be mindful of with the lights and getting it all together as it mixes in some rubber metal pieces as well as the correct light because there are two separate lights in this nook. Here I am just getting a cart put together with some small little plants on it and I had to cut down the little plant I had originally put in but it worked out in the end as I was able to use that piece for something else. 
putting these together, I was so worried I was going to break something, and I broke a few things along the way, but luckily it all worked out in the end. I was able to hide them or use the glue to fix things, and I think that's a big part of the process is not only taking the time to do all of this and the peacefulness and calm that comes with it, but being able to problem solve and put things together and make it your own. That is a huge part of why I really enjoyed this is that even if it's not perfect the way it should be, it's mine and it has a bit of character and personality to it. Only I would know because of the small details in the process of making this. Now this part was so much fun getting the chair together. It is a cute little plastic chair and it comes together really quickly and easily as you can see. The arms and plastic are a little bit malleable so I was able to pinch them right in without any troubles. And then of course there is a little blanket and a pillow that goes on it. Originally, I had thought to use the glue to keep the blanket folded in half as the piece of cloth was quite wide and I wanted to keep it a bit skinnier. Unfortunately, the glue did not work on the material, so note to anyone watching or to future self if I do another one of these, but it didn't work. What ended up working was just the heat from my hand and being able to continuously ply it into that shape that I wanted. It did take some work, but overall it ended up turning out pretty great. And here was a little tricky. This was prepping the cover for the wire. What was so tricky about this and why it took me so long is that they do provide you with a ruler in order to measure out how much you need for each section. There are three sections that you need it for, but they give you the measurements in millimeters and the ruler is in inches. So it was really tricky to try and make sure I was cutting it in the right size. In the end, I needed to swap out and cut an extra piece, but they do give you plenty of extra just in case. You can see the ceiling here that I am working on, threading that wire through for the light that will hang from the ceiling, and those plastic pieces will or should cover the coloring of the wire, which is red and black, and make it blend in a little bit more. Now, getting the ceiling together was actually really exciting because I started to dig into the pieces that were clear plastic that would eventually make the glass or see-through parts of the nook and for me that was so exciting. I also started digging into the lilacs or what I believe are wisteria actually going through the ceiling. These are beautiful purple flowers with vines and getting them to hang down from the ceiling was just a milestone I absolutely loved because it meant that I, for me, I was at the halfway mark in terms of getting things completed or a little bit more than halfway. The flowers are what make it for me, adding such a beautiful touch to a garden house. It likely helps that wisteria flowers are some of my favorites, so having this added detail in a garden house was just a beautiful bonus. Now you can see that I was cutting that new piece of wire here, measuring it just based off of what I could see as the previous wire was too short. One of the cuter details in this was also the red boots with a little plant growing out of it. Absolutely one of my favorites. I did end up gluing that plant in just so it didn't move around. There was no spot to stick it in. But yes, I just love all of the small details in this book nook. Another fun detail about this book nook is it actually has a window that opens and closes. That's what I'm working on here. It's just a small detail and I know with it being on a bookshelf, you might not have it open all the time, but you can move it around in your shelf in a way that it has more room so you can open it if you want that extra detail. Now, putting on the sides was really tricky. 
Like I had mentioned before, those stairs were not secured. And at this point, it was getting harder to get my hand in those small little spots to fix things. I ended up having to use the end of a screwdriver just to put things back to where they belonged when they shifted around. And I could have used more glue and put things down a little bit more solid, but I wasn't sure if I was gonna need to move things again. I'd never done one of these. And the stairs, at this point, I still wasn't sure if it was a me problem or a product problem. So I was just trying to be as careful as possible and pushing the sides into the book nook was not easy. I sometimes found myself needing to sand down the connectors just a little bit as the pieces were too big to fit into the hole that it was meant to go into, making it even harder to squeeze in the sides. But putting in the fake glass or the plastic was so much fun. Putting the roof and the front on was actually pretty easy all things considered. I did try to be more careful with the front as there is a touch area for the button to turn on the lights and I really did not want to crack or break that in any way possible. So I was very careful with the front. Here you can see I am working on the wiring. I was least confident in this part, but by the end, I was really happy with the results. I was following the instructions very carefully and they are written quite clearly, which was a huge help. And they do pre-strip the wires for you, leaving the casing on the end of the wire so they're not damaged and just ready for you to take off when you need to. So I didn't have to worry about stripping wires, just clicking all of the pieces in place and connecting the wires once I was ready. Again, the instructions were really clear and they also include pegs for you to click in the bottom and keep those wires nice and clean, which also prevents them from catching on anything when you are moving it around. After this, it was just a few simple steps to completion. And here it is. I'm thrilled with how it turned out. All of the small details come together to create such a cozy little book nook and that's exactly what I wanted. The lighting is beautiful and adds a lovely tone to it. And even though things didn't always work out exactly the way I'd hoped, like those stairs, it just adds character and I still love it. It is still unique and makes it my own. As you can see, the lights do work. I was thrilled with that. And this little garden gnome has a new home. Again, that window is just a wonderful detail. I really think this was well thought through, easy to follow, and I would recommend trying this if you are interested. I may consider doing another one if I can find one I really love. What do you think about this book nook? Would you try this? Leave your comments down below. I always love hearing from you. As always, thank you for watching and take care of yourself.